The word which up until then I thought meant that area between my legs actually referred to my buttocks. <laughs> I have to say, this left me quite flummoxed. I felt like I was simultaneously betraying my heritage and my nether regions. And despite my vain attempts at unearthing another word for it, I have yet to find one I can use in everyday speech. Each word I come across is either much too vulgar or much too formal. I mean, sometimes I just want to talk about my vagina without sounding like an anatomy professor or a jerk. <laughs> so yes, I am embarrassed to admit, I still don't know a word for vagina in Tamil. Now, how did this mix-up happen in the first place? I don't know, actually. So my mom was born and brought up in Malaysia, like me. Her mom was from Kerala in India and came to Malaysia after marriage. So the Tamil they spoke arrived in Malaysia via Kerala with a healthy sprinkling of Malayalam. Not that any of this makes sense, because as far as I know, in both Tamil and Malayalam, that word is used to refer to the posterior. <laughs> My mother, who's most likely the one that taught this word to me, still uses it. She insists that's what she was taught. So I could possibly be perpetuating a long line of mistakenly termed vaginas. <laughs> Truth be told, it's probably too late for me to think of it by any other name. It's just too entrenched in my mind. Now you're probably thinking, that surely someone would have said something sometime. No. <laughs> and yes, my late 20s is a fairly delayed time to, dis to realize that I have been calling my vagina by the wrong name my entire life. But I can count on, my, on one hand the number of people I've ever discussed my vagina with, let alone use the thumbel word for it. <laughs> and when it does come up in conversation, I'm more likely to use one of the many vague euphemisms this body part has inspired. During my primary school days, the word to describe that general area was coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you were sitting with your legs spread wide open, someone would say, close your coffee shop. <laughs> Where that term originated, I have no idea, nor what coffee shops have to do with little girls and their perceived lack of modesty. As we grew older and presumably learned to keep our legs closed, the terms grew more vague. Down there is used a lot, private parts is used too. Neither of these really helps when it comes to these specifics. My favorite euphemism, however, first reached my ears courtesy of my best friend's mother. She called it a rambutan. <laughs> a rambutan is a fruit native to Southeast Asia. <laughs> it's small, round, reddish, and covered in what looks like wiry hair. <laughs> as far as euphemisms go, I'd say this one pretty much hits the mark. <laughs> you know, one of the best things about living in a multilingual, multicultural country is, though we don't know each other's languages, you can bet that we know each other's swear words. <laughs> and nothing makes quite an effective slur as good old vagina. They're the purest. Get right to the point. In this case, the word vagina, or a rude version of it, is used directly as an insult. Then, they're the people that get personal. Mother's vagina is a favorite. Why this is insulting has never been clear to me. Is it shocking that a person's mother has a vagina? <laughs> Are you forever supposed to disavow that part of your mother's anatomy? Or perhaps no one else has the right to call attention to it? <laughs> On a related note, a Tamil swear word literally translates into son of a vagina. <laughs> to the person at the receiving end. <laughs> Did they not know that they were birthed from a vagina? <laughs> Perhaps they thought the rest of the world didn't. 
<laughs> Analyzing these puzzling questions is perhaps why some decide to qualify the vagina. So if you're feeling particularly incensed, you can opt for Mother's Smelly Vagina, thereby really hitting them where it hurts. <laughs> and then there are those that get quite creative with it, such as one term that basically means pubic hair. What's so offensive about being compared to this harmless little wisp? <laughs> it's proximity to the genitals. Why is that more offensive than, let's say, nose hair? <laughs> More important than these questions is the one that doesn't get asked enough. Why is it so hard to talk about vaginas and by extension, everything related and represented by it? We hush our tones when we say the word. We couch it in mysterious language. We build an artificial wall of purity or vulgarity around it. And so when the time comes for a woman to talk about her body, to talk about sex, to talk about gender, even that very first step is a struggle. So, does it matter that I don't know the Tamil word for vagina? Eh, perhaps. If anyone wants to enlighten me, I'd be more than happy to hear it. But for now, I'm just glad the vagina is being discussed at all in any language. Woo! Woo!